things better, even when the odds are long and the opposition is fierce. Cooperation is better than conflict. Unity is better than division. Empowerment is better than resentment. Bridges are better than walls. That energy, but what do you finally accomplish? When you're knocked down, you can fight the battle. You find a new way to win the war. Keep working to make things better. Even when the odds are long, back. And the opposition is fierce. Tough. Cooperation is better than conflict. Hello, everyone. Thank you very much for uh, joining us today. Welcome to Synthesis um, Virtual Virtual Rendezvous, celebrating the launch of Immersive R and the exhibition that comes with it on headset called Uncharted Territories. Uh, the artists are here in attendance, and, and I will briefly introduce them in a bit. Um, let me start off by spending a few words about Immersive R. What is Immersive R? Immersive R, first off, Immersive R is a collaboration between Synthesis and uh, InVR.Space. And we have Zonke here from uh, um, uh, today with us from InVR, um, InVR HQ in Berlin. Um, so as I was saying, Im Immersive R is a collaboration between Synthesis and InVR Space. And, and most importantly, I would say is a platform merging together art, technology, and programming, whose goal is the um, large-scale distribution of virtual reality art. Um, so to be more specific, Immersive Art, it provides an artistic experience through an, an user-friendly VR headset for rent. Um, shipped, it's ships, um, um, it's shipped, it's shipped anywhere within the EU and the UK. And, and, and the headset gives you access to a collection of uh, um, ambitious virtual reality artworks produced by pioneer artists in the media. Um, Synthesis uh, support, I'm George, George Vitali and, and I represent Synthesis here. Um, we support Immersive R with like, their, like the, the artistic direction, our artistic direction, selecting the artists and curating the exhibitions on headset. Um, it's a biannual program, so the exhibitions are on display twice a, twice a year and the artworks change, uh, will change twice a year. So uh, the exhibition, that I um, uncharted territories, which is, um, as I said, it's synthesis first on headset for immersive R, features a group of artists whose work engage with physical and metaphysical spaces and issues of integration, identity, and and place. Um, the uncharted territories are Helias Canetti's inspired playground in the Patricia Detmering's work Aporia. Hi, Patricia. Hi. Uh, a Teen Moon Strip by Harmin Kaplinger. Hi, Harmin. Hi, thanks for having me. And the so-called Land of Cloud by Tamiko Thiel. So these territories in the exhibition become um, uh, lands of discovery and, and exploration, um, lands of social experimentation. But before we get into the art, into the art I would like to ask, um, uh, I would like to ask Zonke, um, I will start. I would like to start with you, um, Zonke. Could you uh, quickly introduce InVR to the audience and talk a little bit about the project and the innovations that it brings? Sure. Um, so InVR Space is a full-service studio, and as it's already in the name, we focus on virtual reality content. Of course, we um, uh, have to deal with AR or other forms of realities. Uh, so uh, you can consider we are working with XR, but mainly our focus is on virtual reality. So we do um, production and post-production of 360 video. We do interactive work that is created in 3D software and Unity directly without shooting any video. We do a lot of research and development, so we consider ourselves not only as a production studio, but as a research facility as well, <clears throat> um, because it's necessarily needed if you're, if you're dealing with new technology and um, creative approaches that are needed to, to push the boundaries and to develop new tools to, to be able to, to produce your creative visions in a way. 
And last but not least, and there is perhaps um, uh, one of the connections to this project is that we are running a rental. Um, it's under the brand 360 Cameron, um, where we um, rent out cameras, um, all kind of equipment that might be needed for 360 video acquisitions, but as well computers um, that you can use in, uh, for, for Unity uh, development. And last but not least, all kind of XR headsets, so VR headsets as well. Um, this said, we not we do not define ourselves as technologists, but perhaps more like creative technologists because we are creatives that are working on content and needing the technologies as the tools for creating this. Um, and this collaboration shows very well um, um, how this could work and um, how we might be able hopefully to push the boundaries for bringing VR to a non-existing audience, let's say it like that. Don't, don't use the word market for, perhaps in this field, but, but really like just an audience um, in a positive way because no hardware, no TV screen will be sold or brought to an audience if there is no content running on it. And of course you can use a TV screen for just showing TV shows or playing Blu-ray, but it's used in several other fields as well, as a screen for, for games as well, for consoles. Um, and the same applies for virtual reality headsets. But the good thing is, it's a very new medium, so there are no rules. There is no nothing that forces us to stick to something that has not been existing before or not been implemented on, on the headsets. So while, of course, a lot of people um, assume they will see 360 videos, non-interactive works there, or games, Art is something that sometimes is left out and that belongs to galleries, to, to real galleries somewhere. But for several reasons, um, we think it's a very good idea to bring arts to the people uh, at home who are perhaps considering buying a headset or not sure which one, but struggle with technology or the, 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 the idea of buying something that they are not 100% sure if it works or not. So. Um, the easiest way to, 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 to let them think about this is bring the headset to them and show them proper artworks in there. Um, besides, the, that's a general fact, I would say, that it needs this hardware to be delivered to be able to rent it as an audience who is not sure about how they want to deal with this new medium. On the other side, of course, we have to deal with a situation like COVID since a couple of months where people are even less able to go to galleries, to museums, to places um, and watch art in a proper way. And um, as artworks sometimes don't even fit into a living room or into a gallery and even if we're going to VR artworks, they might be even more scaled to a dimension that would not fit into any room, into any scale. And I think we'll hear a little bit more about that later. Um, uh, I think it was a best time and the best idea right now to bring to start with this three um, artworks that we have now to bring them to the homes and not ask people to come to a specific place and gather with dozens of people in a small room to watch artworks. <clears throat> yeah, I, I completely agree. Just to clarify the headset, there are two kinds of headset uh, for, for rent. One is an Oculus Go uh, and it comes, the artworks comes in, in um, a 360 video format. For the Go, while instead there is a little bit more um, pricey option, the Quest, which is the latest um, headset by, the, by Oculus, so the, the state of art of VR, and the artworks in, for, 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 the, um, for the Quest come in VR in VR format. Um, now, um, I, and, and so questions for the artist. Um, how do you think, um, how do you think immersive art um, changes the way VR art is experienced? How do you see the transition from the gallery or a museum space where you know VR art is uh, can be usually found to someone's home for example um <clears throat> so um yeah so how do you see the transition from the gallery space to like you know someone's home and what kind of uh, um how do you think immersive art changes the way VR art is experienced um well i think <clears throat> It, it, it's really a game changer here for the whole experience. I mean, um, 
if you if you think about it like the usual way to to uh, see vr art is like to go to a gallery to be in a line then to have one class to wait for it for for some time and uh basically then to be in there just for five minutes and um and usually that's that's the way you experience it in a gallery and i think with this this kind of system we have here uh, the fascinating thing for me is that everybody at home can take his time actually to watch the piece and also not it's also not about the time you have here it's also like you can change it the way you want to see it just for example you can see my piece on the living room on the floor like for two hours or something like this and really get to a next step, uh, next level of it of, of uh, deep impression out of it and i think this is the wonderful thing um, and I, i'm thinking there also you can watch it in your bathroom on the home trainer i think this this kind of possibility to do whatever you want with it is is wonderful so that's my point about it patricia yeah i think the same um, to, to have the time to uh, stay in for like half an hour or an hour changes completely everything. I mean, especially your work or my work as well. It's uh, like a contemplating work. So you can go in and you can stay there and I don't know, you have the time to think or to just uh, have this impression for a longer time. It's really cool. And without any pressure, I guess. This yeah, I the one thing. Yeah, in the gallery, you always think, okay, there are next ones. They're waiting for uh, the glasses, and um, you feel watched and yeah. uh, it's more intimacy. Yeah, I remember. I remember you telling me, Patricia, about you know the specific um, um, aspect of of the immersive art. The fact that you, you know, the the, the intimacy. The fact that mm -hmm. the participant will be will be intimate like very intimate we'll get very intimate with with the artwork right especially um for for a work like like yours that you know um can be meditative in in a way can be very meditative in a way um patricia i'm you know i'm fascinated about your work um uh and and you know because it's a social playground um, for uh, experimental dynamics of integration. Uh, it's a social playground because, and this is exactly what I'm going to ask next to Patrizia, uh, the artwork, um, Patrizia um, draws, like, draws on, um, um, on Elisa, Eli, Elias Panetti's seminal work, Crowds and Power. And, uh, and, and, and why is it, is it experimental? Uh, because the actors in the VR are driven by algo, like AI, artificial intelligence algo. So the experience is always algorithms. So the, the experience is always different. Um, Patricia, could you talk a little bit about your inspiration for the piece and, uh, and, uh, you know, um, and, and how you envision this the experience being different um did you work with like someone someone who could like um who, like develop the ai the artificial intelligence algos how did you um you know how did you uh thought how did you how did you think of bringing that in in the piece um yeah at first uh, uh the piece is uh, influenced by elias canetti as you said he um as a writer and a thinker, and um, he wrote this book, um, Crowds and Power, uh, in the 60s, uh, and it's about uh, the dynamics of masses, um, how they influence each other, and uh, how it comes that um, a society become more uh, open-minded or close-minded, and um, yeah, what it uh, takes to um, start uh, to have uh, dynamics like that. And what I really liked on this book was uh, that um, it was not really academic. It's more like poetic and full of uh, metaphors. And uh, Aporia, my art piece, um, is similar, I would say. It's, um, uh, it's as you can see, it's uh, hand painted. Everything in the world um, is painted with uh, watercolor, and um, you see this uh, around 60 avatars in a human shape. Um, they are living there, and they 
they go to school, they go to work, they do all the stuff um, humans do. And uh, until the moment that a stranger is coming. So, and this will change everything because all of this, um, Avatars has different uh, algorithms, as he says. Um, and they, some of them are more open-minded, some of them are more close-minded. And then everything changed. So um, they start to build uh, like walls and um, start to, uh, yeah, react on this uh, stranger. And you as a viewer, you just uh, sit there on one point. You are not um, able to um, walk or play or do things what, what's most of the type, time common in uh, VR pieces, I think that you can touch things or, or do uh, playful um, things. It's more that you sit just on a stone and you are an observer. You observe this uh, dynamics. And this is what, um, yeah, what uh, was my intention, that you, that you just sit there and contemplating about dynamics of the crowd. And, um, yeah, and I work together with a programmer, uh, his name is Martin Pleis, and he programs for me the, um, all the algorithms for the behavior, for the different behaviors. And, yeah. And I was a bit inspired, uh, of course, of the current situations that there is uh, everywhere in the world an uh, uprising um, right wing. Um, thing, um, even in my uh, hometown. I come from Thuringia. It's in the middle of Germany. And uh, this is very right wing now. And I thought about, I really want to do work about this because it touched me very to see how many people, um, I don't know, have the right wing uh, mind. And um, so I thought, uh, I really want to know what kind of dynamics happen there. And this, yeah, because of this, uh, I start to think about this work and develop um, with the time and the thinking. Yeah, what I, what I really like about your work it, it is, is like he addresses, he speaks of um, um, integration and insularity and tolerance and prejudice. Um, so you 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 had, as you said, you had these academies, uh, these these events happening like in real life in your hometown. Has um, so the work basically started as a reaction in a way, and and um, they, 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 the events and the news um, happening in your hometown had a big impact on you. Um, in the making of the piece, right? Before and during the making of the piece. Yeah. Yes. Um, actually, it's um, a few things inside of Aporia uh, are um, influenced by my hometown. Like you see this uh, fabric and the school and um, many, many things. Uh, I painted uh, there. The, the, this fabric exists actually. In my hometown and um, I don't know I always try to um, make art with things which come out of my life where yeah, for memories or um, yeah that it's more close to me and I can talk about things I really um, I don't know that they are part of my life it's important. that's that's really that's great and uh, um, in a way, it helps you process it, what, you, what your eyes are seeing, right? Um, Harmin, now, um, MSR is, um, is not a work that is new to me because uh, we have exhibited, we exhibited ex MSR in a couple of times in the past, in a solo show, in a group show. Um, for those who don't know, MSR features a moon sliced ring with zero latitude. And uh, um, as the ring, like it, they, they, they basically what Armin did was he rendered 300 um, kilometers, like the, the moon strip, the moon slice ring is 
300 kilometers wide in reality. So, and, and the diameter is about 3,500. So exactly. Armin render, correct? Yeah, that's, that's yeah. completely right, yeah. Yeah, so Armin rendered the, the, the ring in virtual reality and, and uh, the ring moves slowly uh, in a circle and uh, around the participant and 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 there are like there is some subtle subtle light some like in the movements and um the, the artwork really truly really gives you a feeling of uh, immersion um of course it's worth noting that armin also um composed uh, made the sound that is part of the the the, the artwork so i would like to ask um armin um your fascination um for changing, so like ever changing, changing surfaces is an ongoing topic of like mm. exploration in your body of work. Um, in the MSR, you try to connect the moon's historically changing surface with your fascination for ever changing physical sculpture surfaces. Um, why is it like, why is it, why is it like such a big topic of interest uh, to you? Um, and can you talk about how you, you know, drew inspiration from the, the stunning images of the mm. 13, 13 mission for, for the piece? Yes, I mean, um, on the first, the answer is pretty simple, why I'm, I'm really interested in these kind of, of surfaces and the change of surfaces. I think I was always much more interested to show a transformation or a process or a phenomena than just like one a static image or something like this and I see the possibility out there by showing a process or transformation to have an impact on the viewer like a very uh, immersive impact and I love also the idea behind it that you just experience one moment in this kind of process one time and it's it's unique it's I would say a very classical approach that we have in art there about uh, about never uh, um, about moments that are unique and can't be repeated. And this is of course one thing that was always inter interesting to me. And to give you another example, I think there's also the possibility in there by showing these processes to, uh, to shift the feeling of time of the viewer. And um, to come back to the work, if you're standing in the cycle of this moon actually, and it turns around slowly, you get very different impressions with the sound, with the speed of the surface, uh, with the light change and I would say after a while you can't tell actually have I been there like two minutes or have I been like five minutes or was it like ten minutes and this is something wonderful to me when when I'm thinking about analyzing processes and showing processes actually and uh, to speak more about the piece and the, what I'm showing here actually as you said it's the idea is pretty simple I took the moon as a sphere and imagine the moon as, as an empty body actually, I sliced it and you get this ring. And I, I draw very deeply inspiration from some photographics, uh, photographic works actually that, um, that were uh, happening in the Apollo missions actually from eight to 13. And it's wonderful to see this photographic body of work actually because nobody was that close actually to the moon and it was shot with 35 millimeters. And I was seeing these pictures and these pictures are pretty wonderful to me because um, you have this super hard, sharp contrast, actually the light, the sun is, is, is uh, going over the surface uh, of the moon without any distractions of the atmosphere. It's a very pure and uh, clear aesthetic and I love this kind of super, super minimal tone variations of this gray surface. And uh, then I thought actually, okay, um, I, want to, I want to work with the surface. And I recognized actually, of course, that the surface of the moon has so many different time layers actually. Like if you imagine like from the, from the beginning how the moon was, was uh, created actually with a collision from one planet to the, to the earth actually. And then there came this, this dust cloud together to the sphere. And then in the first time it was pretty much liquid and uh, in the next time of course it went more more solid actually but still there was so many uh, smaller impacts or are still ongoing many many small impacts of asteroids and something like this and i think all these kind of time layers are super fascinating and um, and then the next step for me is actually to bring this kind of of 
physical model um, to this, this kind of digital space and to work there in the digital space with the, with the possibilities that I have there. And yeah, this is uh, the, the core about the work, I would say. Um, how much, I, 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 you know, how much did you uh, draw on like um, American, like in, in, in when you're dress sculptures, um, I see that there is like this sort of like um, inspiration that, you know, comes mm. from like American minimalism and uh, is uh, European uh, precursors. Uh, like Sarah, Richard Serra, Donna Jadi, Joseph Albers. Um, how did they help shaping your creative process? Mm. And uh, yes. Yeah, I, I still uh, strongly share the same DNA and, and philosophy, I would say, that they brought up actually to art. Um, I'm, I followed their, um, their main ideas, I would say, mm -hmm. but I'm just using right now modern technology, uh, certainly to. Um, to bring up these ideas in, in, a, in, a, in a new language on the table, actually, for example, with VR, with video and, and whatever. And I think for me, the, 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 the clever approach is actually to, to, uh, yeah, to get big there, actually, and uh, with uh, things that they couldn't do, actually. I mean, they, they did huge sculptures, of course, but I think with, uh, with modern technology and with VR, uh, you, can, you can do picture types that implement dimensions of, let's say, 100 or 2,000 kilometers and something like this. So uh, this is wonderful to me. And on the other hand, I really uh, have the same connect connection, what is important to me to art. And this is like to... Uh, to think sculpture always in a in a connection to space and also uh, and to think it as one complete unit actually the, the sculpture is not out there also if you if you see the ring out there it's not just the ring it's it's still the empty space uh, that is that it makes just one unit to it and I think it's it's wonderful and they had also the thought to think about negative spaces uh, that appear when you when you put a body out there. Uh, and uh, certainly have the the same uh, approach here. Tamiko, I, I would like to ask you, um, how do you think immersive art changes the way VR art is experienced? How do you see this the transition from like the gallery, the museum space where you know we can easily usually found VR and the art and VR art, of course, to someone's home? Yeah, the, the big difference, of course, in the COVID era is that a lot of people don't want to or can't uh, reach any galleries or museums uh, where they have uh, access to the artworks. And then the other thing is that uh, outside of going to a gallery or a museum or to an art exhibit with VR, um, if you don't have a headset, it's, uh, it's pretty much impossible to, or even if you have a headset, it's pretty much impossible to see VR art. What you find online, what you find in the Oculus store or in the Steam store tends to be these uh, e either games, of course, or, uh, or these narrative experiences that are what tends to get selected for the film festivals. And uh, I was always hoping that there would be something like film uh, funding for media artworks because media artworks are usually multidisciplinary. You usually need um, help from other people in order to do at least a larger work. But then when the, um, when the whole film community started moving into VR, they, they brought also their aesthetic and their their interests along with them, which is natural. But that tends to mean that what gets selected are the narrative pieces, uh, story is very important, and, uh, and it's really kind of a continuation of, of film by other means. And then what I feel is left out tends to be things like these three pieces that are much more, uh, shall we say, perhaps episodic at, at, at most, so to speak, but maybe also just contemplative and, and uh, uh, more of a feeling of an, or an, of an atmosphere, or like Armin's piece is, is like a, a, a sculpture, a sculptural space with audio. And then I think also my piece and the Tristius pieces are both 
spaces where you're you're letting the you know whatever is happening is sort of flowing around you and there is not a dramatic arc uh, so much it's more of a mood of a feeling uh, mm -hmm. quiet contemplation where you're you're uh, looking to see what un unfolds and that is very hard to get um, we usually are not able to find distributors who will say okay let's you know let's put it up here and, and publicize it and let people download it so i think um, you're really filling a niche that has not been addressed um, at all un until now and, and now, speaking of Land of Cloud, your piece, um, I would like, so, so um, I would like, for those who don't know, um, the, the Land of Cloud uh, is, um, is, a, is a magnificent garden. Um, Tamiko, I made this piece in 2018, correct, Tamiko? And, and, Actually, and, the, the, the initial space was 2017 when 17. I was a Google Tilt Brush artist in residence. And yeah, I would like to. Uh, in fact, that that's that that was that's exactly my question. I would like to. So, um, Land of Cloud is a magnificent garden, and all the inhabitants, every inhabitant, is like stands motionless, um, like looking at his own device, and repeats these mantras that are taken from the 2016 Hillary Clinton versus like Donald Trump um, uh, presidential election. Um, uh, could you talk, Tamiko, could you talk a little bit about the piece and your residency um, at Google where, you know, um, everything started? Right. Um, I got very excited when the Google Tilt Brush came out because even in, when I started out at art school, I, I found myself wanting to be able to uh, uh, paint and draw in a very calligraphic style. Um, I'm half Japanese. I grew up uh, some of my childhood in Japan. My mother is a calligraphy master and uh, also teaches Sumiya inkbrush painting. And so I grew up with this very gestural uh, flowing style of, of painting as, as part of my art inheritance and found that uh, when I went to art school, doing it on paper wasn't really enough. And then when I started doing video, I also found having just a single screen wasn't enough. I wanted to work spatially. So when I got the chance in uh, 1994 to start working with virtual re reality, I was very excited because it enabled me to create entire worlds, uh, not just installations, but entire worlds that uh, that uh, I'd never be able to do in real life. And so um, it, that was back in those days, uh, very much a sort of a low polygon, uh, low quality texture and something really gestural, uh, like you can do with Google Tilt Brush, where you can really paint in 3D was just way beyond the uh, what the computers could do at that time. So when it came out uh, in, I think, 2016 or, or so, I was very excited and actually bought my first VR headset, uh, HTC Vive, in order to use Tilt Brush. Um, I was already talking with uh, Google VR and uh, and they said, okay, if you can, you know, if you can start uh, working, then we'll bring you over to San Francisco so you can work with the, the team on some aspect of that space. So I had created this, um, uh, this, this garden where every, every plant is a different gesture, mostly whole body gestures. At, at, at least a, a, a whole arm gesture uh, and and then started working on these figures that were using the smoke brush so they were sort of like a, uh, amorphous clouds that are that are moving slightly and uh, wanted to use my time at uh, at Google to to work on the audio because I think even now Google is is mostly just fixed uh, spaces um, it's it's really hard to uh, to create a, a whole experience, and indeed, actually, after uh, after working with the tilt brush team, they finally said, you know, we're going to have to just create a toolkit, and uh, and you'll have to export into Unity and then do the interactivity and and do the sound in Unity. So it, it took another year or so between the initial space in 2017. 
and and the final uh, peace land of cloud in 2018 um, because I had to go off and learn unity and and learn how to um, do uh, make the go from just from a static uh, space to a much more interactive space where where I was putting in three-dimensional sound right so oh no continue sorry no, it's it's always been it's always been important to me in all of the VR pieces I did starting in 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 the mid '90s to to uh, to have spatialized sound and to really also uh, engage the the user so that the user has to move around and really physically engage with this virtual mm -hmm. space and indeed mm -hmm. in in the finished piece uh, you have to really go up to each figure you're hearing this babble of whispers. That you can't really understand. You have to go up to each figure um, and sort of lean close to it, maybe put your head in its head, uh, sit down next to it, lie down next to it, uh, and really get into its head to understand what it's uh, saying. And uh, what I truly really enjoy about your piece, what I truly really like, um, is, is uh, that it, it's a meditative and very contemplative. You told me you were so uh, positively surprised uh, to see the audience spending like a long time with like the headset on experiencing your artwork. I was wondering, were you expecting that in a way, or there was something else that you were expecting? And um, how are you able to turn political mantras, which usually are like full of rhetorics and, you know, rhetorical, um, into something contemplative and meditative? Yeah, by turning them into whispers, and even so, um, I really noticed that the uh, the whispers in a male voice, which are uh, things that Trump had said in the 2016 campaign, uh, have really plosives, and and I had to turn down the volume on them because just the way he talks, it really dominates the space, and uh, Hillary's. Uh, sayings were much more they were uplifting but much more sort of sort of graceful and 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 soft and so i had to make them louder so that they wouldn't get dominated by trump's utterances and it's really interesting to see that is uh, still coming across in the debates that are happening now for the 2020 election so so um, turning them into whispers was a way of, of bringing everything down and then it fit also with the dynamic of the space where I had these these cloud figures that each one is hunkered down around their device just like we were doing back then just like we are still doing now just listening each one to his or her, her own uh, own voice own bubble and ignoring really the the area around so so i think uh, it was really balancing uh, uh, these this uh, the, the outside and the inside the uh, what people might be really focused on no matter what their surroundings were and i was surprised uh, when when it won the audience appreciation award at vr ham because uh, most of the pieces there had a lot of drama, uh, they had a lot of stories. Um, the piece that won the Jurors Award was a, a piece where simply you're standing in the middle of the field and then there's a huge bang and then all of a sudden you, you're lying on the ground so it, it slowly becomes clear to you you've been shot and you're now lying on, on the ground. So, so that was that was really quite the opposite of, uh, of my piece. And I thought my piece was just too quiet and too soft and too contemplative to be really appreciated uh, because the audience was, uh, at least the jury thought the audience was going to be more interested in these dynamic pieces. So that's why I was so surprised because you do have to, uh, engage with the piece. You do have to spend time with the piece, and I didn't expect people to do it in this atmosphere that seemed to really um, uh, uh, prefer much more dramatic pieces and things with a, a, a clear arc and a clear story. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. So, thank you, Tomiko. Um, we have reached the end. 
I would like to thank everyone in attendance today, Patrizia, Armin, and Tamiko for giving this, you know, introducing us and, and, and to the piece and explaining the piece to us. Thank you to Zonke from uh, NVR HQ in Berlin. Um, I would like to remind everyone that the headsets are on the uh, are for rent and the the, the, uh, the address the link is in the pinned comment um, but you know um, they, they actually the the address it's pretty easy to remember it's in vr that space slash immersive r where you will be able to actually rent the headset thank you very much again guys and thank you um, um, to those who just joined and watch us today thank you guys thank you thank you <laughs> thank you Jojo and bye. thanks everybody bye 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 bye, -bye. bye, -bye. thank you Position is fierce. 